Good morning, friends, and welcome. As we gather on this fourth Sunday of Advent, I invite you now to bow your head with me as we pray. Gracious, good, and living God, we give you thanks for your power and your presence in our lives and for having gathered us together in this time and moment, Lord, through the power of your Spirit. Heavenly Father, grant that your word may be written upon our hearts, changing and transforming our lives. And Lord, as you come to us in this season of Advent, grant us the courage to welcome your birth within our lives. For the sake of your kingdom, we pray. Amen. Friends, I want to share with you this morning some words from Luke's Gospel, chapter 1 and verse 38. Luke writes, Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. I have a colleague and a friend in ministry who, whenever asked to do anything in the service of God or for the service of God's people, even if that thing is as simple as a kind favor for a friend of a friend of a friend, he would always respond in the affirmative. He would always say yes. And as he explained once, the reason for this is simple. If you generally say yes, whenever you are called upon to perform some service or to do some good or help for another person, then when the time comes to say no, not only will people more readily understand, but they will know that you genuinely cannot do it. What is at work here, I believe, is the development of one's generosity muscles, if you will. But specifically, in this example of my colleague, it is the development of a spirit of generosity with regard to one's faithfulness and one's faithful obedience to the will of God. Our obedience to be willing to say to God, not my will, but your will be done. In our scripture readings for this fourth Sunday of Advent, from Isaiah and the psalmist right through to Luke and Paul's letter to the Romans, we are told the story of God's faithfulness, specifically his faithfulness to his promise to establish his kingdom, to establish his rule, to establish his throne, which we know is from everlasting to everlasting. God has established friends. And he is establishing his kingdom rule, not just in our lives, but in all creation, a kingdom which will have no end. But it is in today's gospel reading from Luke, where we are reminded once again of how God's kingdom rule comes to bear specifically on the life of a young girl, Mary, from a little town in, Gaz in Galilee called Nazareth. We are told in Luke's Gospel that the angel Gabriel was sent to her by God with the startling news, the startling message that she had found favor with God and that she would give birth to a son who was to be called Jesus and that he would be called the Son of the Most High that he, in fact, would be the long-awaited descendant of King David, their long-awaited Messiah. And so not only was this encounter and this message from the angel Gabriel perplexing in and of itself, but Mary wondered, and I'm sure she wondered out loud, how could this be? How could these things occur? How could this prophetic message which I've just heard from the angel Gabriel actually come into being in reality. And I believe, friends, that this was a truly a crisis moment for Mary and, of course, for her family and for Joseph's family in the truest sense of the word. 
It was an intensely difficult message to wrap her mind around. It was deeply troubling. She was a virgin engaged to be married. What would her husband think? What would her fiancé think? What would their families say? And it was a dangerous time for Mary in her community to be unmarried and to, found, to be found to be pregnant. And of course, as we know from the scriptural accounts, it was also dangerous for the child that she was carrying on account of those who sought to murder this divinely prophesied king and messiah. It was a crisis moment for Mary in which an important decision had to be made. And the accounts of scripture as we have them today resound with Mary's decision in the affirmative. Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Now, I suspect that uh, this was perhaps not the first time that Mary had shown uh, this kind of deference to the will of God in her life. I am sure that this is not the first time that she had said yes, even if it was something difficult, even if it was something challenging for her. I suspect that there were many occasions previously in Mary's life where she gave, and no doubt gave willingly and gave generously of her time, gave of her economic means, whatever they may have been, gave of her abilities especially in order to remain faithful and obedient in accordance with the Jewish laws and all that was required of her in that day. And so I believe that not unlike my colleague, I suspect that this capacity for generosity, this willingness to say yes to the will of God in her life, is something that Mary had developed over time, through her faithful obedience to all that God called her to do, all who God called her to be. And as I thought about this capacity in Mary and both in my colleague and friend, this willingness to say yes to the will of God, I thought about that famous song, some of you I'm sure will remember by Shirley Caesar, Yes, Lord, Yes, and it goes like this. I'll say yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. I'll say yes, Lord, yes, I will trust you and obey. When your spirit speaks to me, with my whole heart I'll agree. And my answer will be yes, Lord, yes. How is God calling you this day, my friend, in some way to be a bearer of this good news, to be a messenger, to be a means of his present and coming kingdom rule of peace and justice in this world? How is God calling you today? Perhaps God is inviting you to say yes to his presence more fully manifested in your life. Perhaps God is calling you to say yes to his new life within you. Yes to him being born in you today. You see, the truth is that this exciting and this wonderful journey with him in life, it begins and it continues with a simple yes. Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Not my will, Lord, but your will be done. And friends, this invitation, this, this opportunity to say yes is a gift. It is a gift. Like that popular slogan, it is like the gift that keeps on giving. And I'm certain that it is not by accident, friends, that a gift like this, this invitation to say yes, it is not an accident that it is connected as it is in our gospel for today with the news 
of the conception of the Christ child. To receive the news that new human life has been conceived for any parent, it is a gift. It is the sense that, right, it did not have to be. This did not have to happen. It was not there before, but now it is. And those who receive this gift, this gifted message with gladness, very often soon discover that a child, and by extension, human life in general, is a gift. It's a gift which keeps on giving. Every day is a new experience. Every day is a new adventure. You have the opportunity to relate to this other human being who is not yourself in ways that are free and unanticipated but yet still familiarly human. You have the opportunities to create memories. You have the opportunity to share, to grow, to live this life together in the present and to look forward together toward the future. Friends, your life is made different. You grow and you, you change and you adapt, you adapt in ways that you could not have were it not for this other human being being present in your life. And so when you really think about it, in other words, you are and we are given the gift of our new lives to the extent that we share our lives with others. We are given the gift of our new selves to the extent that we share our lives in relationship with others. And of course, all of this is so much more profoundly true for us to the extent that we, like Mary, say yes to Christ's life being born in us. Christ gives us the gift of himself, conceived within ourselves through the power of his holy and life-giving spirit. That is his gift to us. The gift of Christ in us is truly the gift that just keeps on giving. Jesus said, those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. For the water that I will give will become in them a spring of water gushing up into eternal life. A gift that just keeps on giving and giving. And so every day lived with him is a new experience. Every day lived with him is a new adventure as we journey with him, as we share this life together with him. We are given the gift of our new lives to the extent that we say yes in this life to sharing this life with him. Jesus said those who find their lives will lose it. And those who lose their lives for my sake and for the sake of the kingdom will find it. In this age of Advent, I pray that God may give us the grace to live with him faithfully in this life, to learn how to live with and among our fellow human beings as those who are agents of his coming rule of peace and justice in this world. Let there be peace on earth. Let there be justice on earth. And let it begin with me. Mary said, here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Amen.